Michael has always nurtured a strong ambition of being a footballer. He had imagined himself on the international stage playing in the big leagues. When he completed junior high school, he put all his eggs in one basket, football or nothing else. So he traveled to Accra from Asamankese in the eastern region to make the city. He soon realized how it wasn't that easy to be accepted into a football team. I went to Sahara where I was told selection of players is done. I was asked to pay 500 cities registration fee, but I didn't have the money, so I had to find another means to survive. Looking like a shattered dream, Michael refused to go back home. He quickly had to make another plan to survive. He tried his hands on jobs that could fetch him money. So I found work by washing utensils for a kinky seller. After a while, I changed to help him produce and sell paints. That too didn't earn me much money. Oh. So I started selling buffalo. I carried it on my head and hawked around to sell. I left that too to sell fried rice, but I had to again quit to go back to selling paint as I saw that as more lucrative. Michael got excited about migrating to South Africa. A client convinced him that he would earn more money whilst there. One day, I met a woman named Madame Gaibi. I mean, I didn't come on or so. One day, when I came to work, I met a Baba who encouraged me to learn the trade. I wasn't interested because I wanted to learn tailoring, but after some counsel, I decided to learn how to Baba, and through that, I traveled to SA based on the conviction of a friend. He touched down in Johannesburg and called the person who was supposed to host him. For over 10 hours, the person did not answer his phone call. After loitering in the airport, migration officials became suspicious of his moves and sent him back to Ghana on the next available flight. Take the airport now, or so family. You do all and much better for up to an ajube tent to no buy. Oh. From 4 a.m. when I landed in SA and 10 p.m., my host never picked his calls. Even from the immigration officers, they then became suspicious and deported me back to Ghana. South Africa airport. back to With no money left, no job to hold on to, and no one to look up to, Michael decided to go back home to Asamankese. But some friends convinced him not to take that route. It took him so many years to bounce back. Eventually, the ever-determined Michael got back on his feet and now owns a barber shop. I spent all my money on the South African trip, so when I came back, I really cried. I felt all was lost. I hustled a lot but could not get much money. I decided to go back to work with my former boss. After working for a while, I thought of getting my own shop. So in 2018, I rented this place and today, I tirelessly worked towards making this work for me. His friend admires his determination. I know Michael to be very hardworking. Somebody who, who, who doesn't give up easily. Yeah, because I have, I have had an opportunity to be around his story. In as much as a yaw, the downs and everything, but he didn't give up. Full of disappointment. But he came back strongly and right, uh, started all over again. And right now, 
is Mickey. It's Mickey, Mickey yeah. Barbering. <laughs> a, a, a barber owner, like a shop owner. Yeah. yeah. Married with a child, Michael says he still longs to play football, but not on a competitive basis. His advice to the youth is simple. Giving up shall never be an option. So called open be or be now we we all have desires, but sometimes achieving them becomes difficult. Don't sit down doing nothing. You have to try something else just as I did. I also urge my brothers and sisters to trust in God to give them the best. And like me, they would also survive. For Joy News, I am Hannah Odame.